लियाकत अली खान वाज अ पाकिस्तानी लॉयर पोलिटिशन एंड स्टेट्समैन हाउ सर्ड एज द फर्स्ट प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ पाकिस्तान फ्राम नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन अंटिल असैसीनेशन ही वाज अ लीडिंग एक्टिविस्ट ऑफ द पाकिस्तान मूवमेंट Khan was born in Karnal to an Urdu speaking family. He was educated at the Aligarh Muslim University and University of Oxford. After first being invited to National Congress, he later opted to join the All India Muslim League led by Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Lakhat Ali Khan's political activism and political career in British India Lakhat Ali Khan returned to his homeland in India in 1923 entering in national politics determining to eradicate to what he saw as the injustice and ill treatment of Indian Muslims under the British Indian government and the British government His political philosophy strongly emphasized a divided India first gradually believing in the Indian nationalism The Congress leadership approached to Ali Khan to become a part of the party but after attending the meeting with Jawaharlal Nehru Ali Khan's political views and ambitions gradually changed Therefore Ali Khan refused informing the Congress party about his decision and instead joining the Muslim League in 1923 led under another lawyer Muhammad Ali Jinnah Soon Jinnah called for an annual session meeting in May 1924 in Lahore where the goals boundaries party programs vision and revival of the league was an initial party agenda and was carefully discussed at the Lahore Qazis at this meeting Khan was among those who attended this conference and recommending the new goals for the party United Provinces Legislation and Lakhat Ali Khan Lakhat Ali Khan was elected to the Provincial Legislation Council in the 1926 election from the rural Muslim constituency of Muzaffargarh Ali Khan embarked his parliamentary career representing the United Provinces at the Legislative Council in 1926 In 1932 he was unanimously elected deputy president of UP legislative council During this time Ali Khan intensified his support in Muslim dominated populations after raising the problems and challenges faced by the Muslim communities in the province Lakhat Ali Khan joined hands with academician Sir Zauddin Ahmed taking to organize the Muslim students communities into one student union advocating for the provisional rights of the Muslim state His strong advocacy for Muslims rights had brought him into national prominence and significant respect was also gained from Hindu communities whom he fought against at higher levels of the government Ali Khan remained the elected member of the UP legislative council until 1940 when he was elected to the central legislative assembly he participated actively and was the influential member in legislative affairs where his recommendations would also be noted by the other members In his parliamentary career Ali Khan established his reputation as eloquent and principled spokesman who would never compromise on his principles even in the face of severe odds Lakhat Ali Khan on several occasions used his influence and good offices for the resolution of communal tension Lakhat Ali Khan's aligning with the Muslim League Ali Khan rose to become one of the influential members of the Muslim League and was one of the central figures in the Muslim League delegation that attended the national convention it held at Kolkata 
Earlier, the British government had formed the Simon Commission to recommend the constitutional and territorial reform to the British government. The commission comprising seven British members of parliament headed under its chairman Sir John Simon met briefly with the Congress party and Muslim leaders. The commission had introduced the system of the RQ to govern the provinces of British India, but these revisions met with harsh criticism and clamor by the Indian public. Motilal Nehru presented his Nehru report to counter British charges in December 1928. Ali Khan and Jinnah decided to discuss the Nehru report. In 1930, Ali Khan and Jinnah attended the first roundtable conference, but it ended in disaster, leading Jinnah to depart from British India to Great Britain. In 1932, Ali Khan married for a second time to Begum Rana, who was a prominent economist and academic who became an influential figure in the Pakistan movement. Lakat Ali Khan firmly believed against the unity of Hindu Muslim community and worked tirelessly for that cause. In his party presidential address delivered at the Provisional Muslim Educational Conference at AMU in 1932, Ali Khan expressed the view that the Muslims had distinct culture of their own and had the every right to preserve it. At this conference, Yaqat Ali Khan announced that the days of rapid communalism in this country are numbered and we shall hear witnessed along the United Hindu Muslim India annexed to preserve and maintain all that rich and valuable heritage which the contact of two great cultures bequeathed us. We all believe in the great destiny of our common motherland to achieve which common assets are but invaluable. Soon he and his new wife departed to England but did not terminate his connections with the Muslim League. With Liaquat Ali Khan departing, the Muslim League's parliamentary wing disintegrated, with many Muslim members joining the Ithar Democratic Party originally organized by Ali Khan 1930 and the Congress Party. At the deputation in England, Ali Khan made close study of organizing the political parties and would soon return to his country with Jinnah. In 1930, Jinnah hired Prime Minister Ramsey MacDonald and his Viceroy Lord Irwin to convene a roundtable conference in London. In spite of what Jinnah was expecting, the conference was a complete failure, forcing Jinnah to retire from national politics and permanently settle in London and practice law before the Privy Council. During this time, Liaquat Ali Khan and his wife joined Jinnah with Ali Khan practicing economic law and his wife joining the faculty of economics at the local college. Liaquat Ali Khan and his wife spent most of their time convincing Jinnah to return to British India to unite the scattered Muslim League masses into one full force. Meanwhile, Chaudhary Rahmat Ali coined the term Pakistan in his famous pamphlet No or Never Are We to Leave or Perish Forever. When Muhammad Ali Jinnah returned to India, he started to reorganize the Muslim League. In 1936, the annual session of the League met in Bombay. In the open session on 12 April 1936, Jinnah moved a resolution proposing Khan as the Honorary General Secretary. The resolution was unanimously adopted and he held the office till the establishment of Pakistan in 1947. In 1940, Khan was made the deputy leader of the Muslim League Parliamentary Party. Jinnah was not able to take active part in the proceedings of the assembly on account of his heavy political work. It was Khan who stood in his place. During this period, Khan was also the honorary 
General Secretary of the Muslim League, the Deputy Leader of their party, Governor of the Action Committee of the Muslim League, Chairman of the Central Parliamentary Board, and the Managing Director of the Newspaper Dawn. The Pakistan Resolution was adopted in 1948, the last session of the Muslim League. The same year elections were held for the Central Legislative Assembly, which were contested by Khan from the Barely constituency. He was elected without contest when the 28th session of the league met in Madras on 12 April 1941. Jinnah told party members that the ultimate aim was to obtain Pakistan. In this session, Khan moved a resolution incorporating the objectives of the Pakistan resolution in the aims and objectives of the Muslim League. The resolution was seconded and passed unanimously. 1945-46 mass elections were held in India, and Khan won the central legislature's election from the Meerut constituency in the United Provinces. He was also elected chairman of the League's Central Parliamentary Board. The Muslim League won 87% of seats reserved for Muslims of British India. He assisted Jinnah in his negotiations with the members of the cabinet mission and the leaders of the Congress during the final phases of the freedom movement, and it was decided that an interim government would be formed, consisting of members of the Congress, the Muslim League, and minority leaders. Then the government asked the Muslim League to send five nominees for representation in the interim government. Khan was asked to lead the League group in the cabinet. He was given the portfolio of finance. The other four men nominated by the League were Ibrahim Ismail Chandrigar, Uzanfar Ali Khan, Abdul Rab Nishtar, and Jugantar Nath Mandal. By this point, the British government and the Indian National Congress had both accepted the idea of Pakistan and therefore, on 14 August 1947, Pakistan came into existence. Lakat Ali Khan Administration and immigration and his political career from 1947 to 1951. After independence, Khan was appointed as the first Prime Minister of Pakistan by the founding fathers of Pakistan. Khaid Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah took out from Liaquat Ali Khan. The country was born during the initial beginning of the extensive competition between the two world superpowers the United States and the Soviet Union. Khan faced with mounted challenges and difficulties while trying to administer the country. Khan and the Muslim League faced dual competitions with socialists in West Pakistan and the communists in East Pakistan. The Muslim League found it difficult to compete with the socialists in West Pakistan a low considerable support in the favor of socialists led by Marxist leader Fayez Ahmed Fayez. In East Pakistan, the Muslim League's political base was eliminated by the Pakistan Communist Party after a staging of a mass protest. On the internal front, Khan faced with socialist national challenges and different religious ideologies saw the country fall into more unrest. Problems with the Soviet Union and Soviet bloc further escalated after Khan failed to make a visit to the Soviet Union due to his hidden intention. Khan envisioned an unaligned foreign policy and the country became more inclined to the United States and this ultimately influenced Khan's policy toward the Western bloc. His government faced serious challenges including the dispute over Kashmir with India. Forcing Khan to approach his counterpart, the Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, a settlement was read to end the fighting, while Nehru also referred the issue to the United Nations. Ali Khan sent the recommendation to Jinnah to appoint Abdul Rashid as the country's first Chief Justice and Justice Abdul Rahim as President of the Constitutional Assembly. Both of them were also founding fathers of Pakistan. Some of the earliest reforms Khan took were to centralize the Muslim League and he planned and prepared the Muslim League to become the 
leading authority of Pakistan. The Daily Times, a leading English language newspaper, held Liaquat Ali Khan responsible for mixing religion and politics, pointing out that Liaquat Ali Khan had no constituency in the country. His hometown was left behind India. Bengalis were a majority in the newly created state of Pakistan, and this was a painful reality for him. According to the Daily Times, Liaquat Ali Khan and his legal team retrained from writing down the constitution. The reason being simple, the Bengali demographic majority would have been granted political power and Liaquat Ali Khan would have been sent out of the Prime Minister's office. The secularists also held him responsible for promoting the right-wing political forces controlling the country in the name of Islam and further politicized the Islam, despite its true nature. Economic and Educational Policies of Liaquat Ali Khan As Prime Minister Ali Khan took initiatives to develop educational infrastructure, science and technology in the country with the intention of carrying the vision of successful development of science and technology to aid the essential foreign policy of Pakistan. In 1947, with Jinnah inviting physicist Rafi Muhammad Jodri to Pakistan, Liaquat Ali Khan called upon chemist Salamuzman Sadiqi, awarding him citizenship and appointing him as his first government science advisor in 1950. During the same time, Khan also called physicist and mathematician Raziuddin Sadiqi asking him to plan and establish educational research institutes in the country and develop an anti-Indian programs. Khan asked Ziauddin Ahmed to draft the national education policy, which was submitted to his office in November 1947 and a roadmap to establishing education in the country, was quickly adopted by Khan's government. Khan government catharized the establishment of the Sindh University under his government. Science infrastructure was slowly built, but he continued inviting Muslim scientists and engineers from India to Pakistan, believing it essential for Pakistan's future progress. In 1947, Khan and his finance minister Malik Ulam proposed the idea of five year plans by putting the country's economic system on investment and capitalism grounds, focusing on an initial planned economic system under the directives of private sector and consortium industries in 1948. Economic planning began to take place during his time in office but soon collapsed the party because of unsystematic and inadequate staffing. Khan's economic policies were soon heavily dependent on the United States aid to the country. In spite of planning an independent economic policy, Khan's economic policies focused on the United States aid program. On the other hand, Nehru focused on socialism and went on to be part of a non-aligned movement. An important event during his premiership was the establishment of a national bank in November 1949 and the installation of paper currency mill in Karachi. Unlike his Indian counterpart Jawaharlal Nehru under Khan's Pakistan economy was planned but also an open free market economy. Constitutional Annex and Problem during his early days in office, Khan first adopted the Government of India Act 1935 to administer the country. Although his lawmakers and legislators continued to work on a different document of governance. Finally, in 1949, after Jinnah's death, Prime Minister Khan intensified his visit to establish an Islamic based system in the country. Presenting The Objective Resolution A prelude to future constitution in the Constituent Assembly, the House passed it on 12 March 1949, but it was met with criticism from his law minister Jugandar Nath Mandal, who argued against it. 
Fever criticism were also raised by MP Ayaz Amir on the other hand Liaquat Ali Khan described as this bill as the manga carta of Pakistan constitutional history Khan called it the most important occasion in the life of this country next in importance only to the achievement of independence under his leadership a team of legislators also drafted the first report of the basic principles committee and work began on the second report after it another major event was war with india at a meeting of partition council liaquat ali khan had rejected an offer from wala bhai patel regarding kashmir and hyderabad state patel had offered kashmir to pakistan in exchange for pakistan relinquishing its claim to hyderabad Liaquat Ali Khan rejected this offer preferring to keep Hyderabad ignoring that the distance between the two would prevent Hyderabad's accession to Pakistan in any case Pakistan states main Shaukat Ayat Khan resigned in protest of this folly Hyderabad went to India anyway and the two nations went to war over Kashmir Soon after appointing a new government Pakistan entered a war with India over Kashmir the British commander of Pakistan army general sir frank walter refused to attack the indian army units when general dogles gracy was appointed the commander in chief of the pakistan army liaquat ali khan ordered the independent units of the pakistan army to intervene in the conflict On the Kashmir issue Khan and Jinnah Plosi reflected Pakistan's alliance with US and United Kingdom against Indian imperialism and Soviet expansion. However, it is revealed by historians that differences and disagreement with Jinnah arose over the Kashmir issue. Jinnah's strategy to liberate Kashmir was to use military force. To Jinnah's strategy was to kill two birds with one stone, namely Desi Aided India by controlling Kashmir and to find a domestic solution through in foreign policy and military intervention. On Khan's personal accounts and views, the Prime Minister preferred a hardened diplomatic and less military stance. The Prime Minister sought a dialogue with his counterpart and agreed to resolve the dispute of Kashmir in a peaceful manner through the efforts of the United Nations. According to this agreement a ceasefire was effected in Kashmir on 1st January 1949 it was decided that a free and impartial plebiscite would be held under the supervision of the United Nation the prime minister diplomatic stance was met with hostility by the pakistan armed forces and the socialist and communists Notably, the mid-higher level command who would later sponsor an alleged coup led by the communists and socialists against his government. Liaquat Ali Khan's policy toward the U.S. and USSR In 1949, the Soviet leader Joseph Stalin sent an invitation to Liaquat Ali Khan to visit the country, followed by a U.S. invitation after they learned of the Soviet move. In May 1950 Khan paid a state visit to the United States after being persuaded to snap ties with the Soviet Union and set the course of Pakistan's foreign policy to work closer ties with the West despite it being the Soviet Union who sent its invitation of Khan to visit the country first the first Visit further commenced through strong ties between the two countries and brought them closer. According to many sources, Khan's formulated policies were focused on movement of non-aligned countries. In his trip to U.S. in 1950, Khan made clear that Pakistan's foreign policy was neutrality. Being a newly born nation with trouble in planning the economy, Khan asked the U.S. for economic and moral support to enable it to stand on its feet. The United States gladly accepted the offer and continued its aid throughout the years, but ties deteriorated after the United States asked Khan to send two cabinet divisions to support U.S. military operations in the Korean War. 
Han wanted to send the divisions but asked the US for assurance on Kashmir and the Pakistan issue, which the US declined to give. Han decided not to send the divisions, a clear indication that Pakistan was working towards a non-aligned movement. The United States began working on a policy to keep Pakistan impartial and India on the other hand remained a key stone to bringing instability in South Asia. By June and July 1951, Pakistan relations with the U.S. deteriorated further with narrow visits the United States, presenting Pakistan to recall her troops from Kashmir. Pakistan cannot afford to wait. She must take her friends where she finds them. Lakat Ali Khan calling the Soviet Union and China. Khan began to develop in tighter relations with the Soviet Union, China, Poland, and Iran under its premier Mohammad Mossadegh as well. Khan sent invitation to Stalin and the Polish community leader to visit the country. However, the visits never happened after Khan was assassinated and Stalin died. In 1948, Khan established relations with the Soviet Union and Agreement was announced a month later. The offering of U.S. trade had frustrated Khan. Khan sent a career for Minister Officer Jamshed Marker as Pakistan ambassador to Soviet Union a few months later. A Soviet ambassador arrived in Pakistan with her large staff and accompanied military attaches. In 1950, Ali Khan established relations with China by sending his ambassador, making Pakistan to become the first country to establish relations with China, a move which further dismayed the United States while in Iran, Lakat Ali Khan talked to the Soviet Union and Soviet ambassador Moscow permanently extended an invitation to him to visit the Soviet Union. Struggling for Control Ali Khan's stability to run the country was put in doubt and great questions were raised by the communist and socialist active in the country. In 1947-40 year period, Liaquat Ali Khan and Jinnah relations were contentious and the senior military leadership and Jinnah himself became critical of Khan's government. In his last months, Jinnah came to believe that his prime minister was a weak prime minister highly ambitious and not loyal to Jinnah and his vision in his dying days. The death of Jinnah was announced in 1948 as a new cabinet was also re-established. Ali Khan faced the problem of religious minorities during late 1949 and early 1950. And observers feared that India and Pakistan were about to fight the second war in the first three years of the independence. At this time, Ali Khan met Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru to sign the Lakhat Nehru Pact 1950. The pact was an effort to improve relations and reduce tension between India and Pakistan and to protect the religious minorities on both sides of the border. Prime Minister Lakhat Ali Khan did not take over the office of Governor General, instead, appointing Khwaja Nazimuddin, a Bengali statesman from West Pakistan. When Jinnah died, he had held three major positions, Governor General, President of Muslim League, and the Constituent Assembly, of which he served both its president and legal advisor. Although Ali Khan was legislator and lawyer, he lacked Jinnah's political stature. Differences and problems also leveled up with the Pakistan forces and a local Native section of Pakistan Army was completely hostile towards Ali Khan's diplomatic approach with India. The existence of high level opposition was revealed in the Rawalpindi conspiracy, sponsored by Chief of General Staff General Akbar Khan and headed by communal leader Faiz Ahmad Faiz. Another difference came when Khan also intensified policies to make the country a parliamentary democracy and federal republic. During his tenure, Khan supervised the promulgation of the October Objectives in 1949, which passed by the Constitution Assembly. The document was aimed at an Islamic, democratic, and federal constitution and government 
disagreement existed about the approach and method to realize these aims the third major difference was itself in the muslim league the party had weak political structure with no public base ground or support its activities revealed in high functionalism low commitment to resolve public problems corruption and incompetency of planning social and economic programs in his pakistan ali khan lack of attention for the development of bengali section of state brought about a bad juncture for the prime minister and his party where its ideology was vague in terms of its political base it was both weak and narrow and could not compete in west pakistan as well as in east pakistan where traditional families were endowed with enormous political power in west pakistan the muslim league failed to compete against the socialist and in east pakistan the communist liaquat ali khan faced 1951 military scandal liaquat ali khan relation with general sir douglas gracie deteriorated promoting general gracie to retire soon after the conflict In January 1951 Liaquat Ali Khan approved the appointment of General Ayub Khan to succeed Gracie as the first native commander in chief of Pakistan army During this time the socialists gained a significant amount of support senior military leaders and prominent socialists plotted to overthrow the government of Liaquat Ali Khan Those involved reportedly included or chief of general staff major general akbar khan and marxist socialist faiz ahmed faiz the leaders of the co-plot the military police arrested many in the military services more than 14 officers were charged for plotting the coup the rawalpindi conspiracy as it became known was the first attempted coup in pakistan history the arrested conspirators were tried in secret and given lengthy jail sentences assassination of liaquat ali khan 16 october 1951 khan was shot twice in the chest while he was addressing a gathering of 1000 people eight company bag rawalpindi the police immediately shot the presumed murderer who was later identified as professional assassin said akbar Khan was rushed to a hospital and given a blood in transfusion but he succumbed to his injuries Saad Akbar Babarak was an Afghan national from the Pashtun Zardan tribe he was known to Pakistani police prior to the assassination of Liaquat Ali Khan the exact motive behind the assassination has never been fully revealed and much speculation surrounds it An Urdu daily published in Bhopal, India, saw a U.S. hand behind the assassination. Upon his death, Khan was given the honorific title of Shaheed Millat or Martyr of the Nation. He is buried at Mazar-e Qaid, the Muslim Main, built for Jinnah in Karachi. The municipal park where he was assassinated was renamed, renamed as Liaquat Ali Khan Bag. in his honor it is the name and same location where ex prime minister benazir bhutto was also assassinated in 2003 it was the whole story of liaquat ali khan who was the first prime minister of pakistan